Hi, this is your sewing Sherpa Shana, and I'm going to sew, sew you or show you how to um, re-thread your serger the easy way. So on this serger, which is a lot like your home sewing serger, it's an industrial one, but it's a four thread like most home sewing ones, you have your a lower looper, your upper looper, and then your two needles. So I'm going to thread this from left to right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm cutting the thread at the cone. So they're just dangling. Next, I'm going to put on my lower looper, my upper looper, and I'm going to tie them off. So I'm just putting them side by side, wrapping around, pulling a traditional knot. Two of them side by side, wrap it around, tuck it through. And this is the only kind of knot that works because other types of knots will slide as you're pulling on them. You have to have the side by side, wrap it around knot. Otherwise, you'll be disappointed because your knot will come out as you're pulling it through and then you'll have to thread your serger the old fashioned way, which who wants to actually thread the serger? <laughs> That's a lot of threads going through a lot of little holes. So side by side, pull it through. Now you can trim these tails off if you want to. I am usually too lazy to do that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my presser foot out of the way if I can. All right, now it'll go out of the way, out of the way. Now I'm going to release the tension on these two. So I have a front tension system where I can pull these two forward. Theoretically, if I lift the presser foot, the tension should come off too, but I need to release the tension somehow so I can get a hold of these two. Oh, if I can't do it, get out your tweezers. There we go. And I need to get these two top, the, the needles unthreaded. Like they literally need to be not threaded anymore, but everything else in the path can stay in place. Get those out of the way. Then I'm going to hold on to my bottom one. So these are my lower loopers. And I'm going to release the tension on these two by pulling on them. And I'm just going to pull. So you can see the knots are coming through. Here come those knots. Here come those knots. And the knots are through. And I've got my new color. You always do the bottom ones first, and they can be done at the same time. So I can get that out of my way. I don't need that. And now I'm going to pull the tops through, releasing the tension. Here comes my knots. They're gonna go through the path. There they go. And now all I have to do is thread the needles. And they kind of crossed, I'm gonna uncross them. There we go. I like to use tweezers to thread my needle because sometimes, especially on the industrial machines, I can't get back past the knife very easily with my fat fingers. Uh -huh. I went through and then the tweezers pulled it back out. Give it to me. There we go. Inside needle first. Ooh, see how it's got that raggedy end? It's not gonna go through. There we go, tight end. Oftentimes your overlock thread is really fuzzy because it's not meant to be strong because it's never gonna work by itself. It's gonna work with all the other threads at the same time, so it doesn't need to be perfect. So it's gonna be really fuzzy and that makes it hard to go through. So now I've got all four threads through um, and they are not over, there's nothing crossing below. Um, so, to get them underneath this foot and towards the back and then I'm going to do a Hail Mary and they got it actually needs to be under the foot and towards the back there we go I usually have a piece of fabric to test on right now when it's starting because it's usually good to have a piece of fabric but oh it started out just perfect there we go we have all four threads threaded up